Hello, hi and welcome on in to Adobe Live. My name is Annika and I'm your host. This is Let's InDesign and I am super stoked to be back after Max. Um, I don't know about you guys, but I really enjoyed Adobe Max 2022 releases for all our new applications, of, of course, including Adobe InDesign. I know that this stream is both on Behance and YouTube. So if you're watching the live right now, make sure to say hi in the chat. I am excited to hear from you. I want to know what your favorite new InDesign features are. So put them in the chat. Um, I personally love auto style. I don't know if you've ever heard of it, but um, I will demonstrate it today. So that's pretty cool. I want to say hi to everyone in chat. So if you're watching this on the Adobe Live YouTube channel, say hello in the chat. Ask any questions you have. We are going to design a restaurant menu today, which is exciting because who doesn't love food, right? I love food. You love food. We all love food and we need a menu for the food. Um, I want to say hi to everyone in the Behance chat. I want to say hi to Steve. Hey, welcome on in. Susan, we have Katerina, Robert, Val, um, Stacy, Muendwa. Um, we have Rob in the chat. Rick Adams. Hello, hello. D Cruz, welcome on in, everyone. Thanks for being here. Um, I want to say that today is special because I can't wait to show you how many exciting and cool features I'm creating. I think today's stream is super special because I'm actually working on the first branding project I ever created here on Adobe Live. Um, it was a plant based restaurant and I think that's pretty cool because I get to create something again for it and it's on um, Adobe Live again. So I'm super excited. I don't know if you all were here when I first got on Adobe Live and that was called Puro. Um, we created, I was here with Alex Lazarus and um, yeah, we created this brand. It was super cool. I had a lot of fun and I never got time to design the restaurant menu. So I thought, why not? Because this restaurant needs a beautiful menu. But today we're going to demonstrate both um, using Adobe stock assets or even creating it from scratch. Before we dive into it, I want to show you what InDesign looks like. So um, I see some chat rolling. I'm going to address that in just a second. I know Robert says it's been 20 years. Um, I use this type of design on the old windows. That was a Swedish program. Oh, that's cool. Uh, are you talking about InDesign, Robert? Let me know. And Stacy says, I don't even know the new features yet. So many features across the CC app still catching up. Yeah, it is insane, right? All of the new applications. I know someone in chat said it's like Christmas. Christmas came in early. Uh, it's Christmas for us creators. But all right. Um, so let's dive into it. I want to show you the first one, which is essentially, um, let me actually show you the cooking show style. <laughs> um or maybe not maybe i should save it for for the end but this is what we're working on today um i went ahead and created an a4 size sheet so if i press w just to go to overprint view i will be able to see what um my text frames are where my images are what assets i've imported here and what is going on right i want to see everything because i'm just in the creative mode creation mode um, also creative mode <laughs> But um, again, let me know if you guys have any questions and if the audio and video is okay. I hope it is okay. I think it should be. But um, as you can see, we have the basic A parent here. We also have um, uh, two pages, one and two. Um, the A parent is applied. If I wanted logos on any of these pages, I would apply it to my parent page. But I don't want that right now. Today, we're going to cover paragraph rules. We're going to cover center line. Um, Paragraph styles, we're going to use separate text frames because sometimes that's best when you're creating something like this. Um, I'm going to also show you how to use a story editor. I don't know if you all know how that works. I know some of you in the chat probably know. And we're also going to turn um, talk about paragraph borders and shading if time permits. But let's dive into it. I have some information here. But without further ado, let's actually go home, go to a home page and click on the learn tab and show you what's here. So you can see that there are um, tutorials right here. So you can use any of these tutorials for um, in case you have a very specific request and you want to do something. Um, I'm going to check in chat just in case we have any messages. All right. Um, all right. So uh, I want to go here and click on the new file icon and create a new document. So I have uh, this pop up menu that pop dialog box that popped up just making sure you see everything we have recent saved print web and mobile now the recent is essentially the last one that i used i can change it to inches just because it's easier for me this is an a4 size 8.5 by 11 inches but in case you don't know how how how, the, how much that is you can go to 
sorry about that you can go to the print menu and go to the a4 option right here change the units again um and then that's it i did have some uh bleed applied to it that is essentially why it had extra sizing there i'm gonna size that up and it's gonna change um i i think that was a weird size okay and then we have some bleed in here i think the margin is fine for now and i can preview it as well so once i check box this preview button it's going to show me the preview but i don't want it to be like this i wanted to try fold brochure so it like folds three times on its own so i'm going to change the layout of this and the orientation is essentially landscape so we have landscape and in the background it's changing right i also don't want this to be facing pages because i'm not working in a book format and i don't want that style um, I don't want these pages to be facing. I also want to change the number of pages to two because there is a front and back. So I'm going to change that. And I'm going to change the number of columns to be like um, three, I guess. Yeah, I guess we'll, we'll change that. Um, I don't see anything happening. I'm going to change the column cutter here. Okay, I think I think this should work. I'm going to click OK and see what happens. Oh, that's weird. I, that is so weird. Um, all right, so we have columns. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to open this file just to show you how that works. So essentially, um, that's what we have. We just have this A4 size sheet, three columns, margins, blades, everything set up. It's in CMYK mode, so you don't need to worry about the color mode here as well. And now I can start adding content. So I know there's a question in chat. Mwenda Mwendwa asks, um, what do you consider when designing a menu? So Mwendwa, basically what you consider while designing a menu is essentially what brand elements are so if you're working with a restaurant you would think about their brand guidelines if someone else has designed their logo you should know all the colors they're using if there are any illustrations how you can use their logo and then comes the copy information which will be provided by your client if you're doing this as a passion project you can be like me and um, you can have this pages document or a word document which has all the information for the brand um, just realize i'm not showing my screen so here you go <laughs> You can have all the information like this. I usually keep my copy in like a document where I'm working on a, a personal project or a passion project. I just keep it here and I'm like holy moly burrito, spicy chipotle burrito. So all of these I created like last year and I had all of this information on hand. So I was like, maybe I should just use this. And um, we have some tacos in here. So think about what is displayed on a menu. There is logo, there is type, what fonts you're using, what information basically where you can find the food address how you can reach them email phone number how you can order food right what are the colors that we use are there any illustrations or imagery that you want to use on the menu what's the style they're going for is it fun is it uh, in line with the brand is it beautiful is it like something that you would uh, see on like a food truck is it something that you would see like a fine dining restaurant think about all of those things and the copy that you're using is essentially the copy that has been provided by the client so these are all the things that you might want to think about when designing a restaurant menu i hope that answers your question but in case you have anything else let me know um, and i can answer that i just want to see if there are any more questions in chat and it doesn't seem like it all right let's jump back into it so yeah this is like um spoilers because now you see that this is where i'm copying the information from i have it written down here so what i'm gonna do is essentially copy some menu items here so i have burritos um because we all like burritos i added some juices and smoothies up in here but i can just press command v and right over here you can see um as I pasted, I'm going to zoom in just a little bit so you can see. So right over here, you can see there's this new option here, which is essentially you can either paste text without formatting. This is a new feature post Adobe Max. Um, and this is with styling. So you can paste with formatting as well. This is going to paste whatever font I had in my system in the document that I was working on. So I was working on, I'm on a Mac OS and I was working on a pages file. So which is right here. So this is the file and the font that I was using essentially was um, a Helvetica, right? And so this is also Helvetica and you can see right over here, it's the same font, right? And we have this information um, right over here. Um, 
and I can either use it with formatting or without formatting. So if I undo and paste it again, I press command V on the keyboard or control V if you're working on a Windows device, I see that I have this option right here, which says paste with formatting or without formatting, right? It's amazing. It's mind blowing. Stacy in the chat says, oh snap, I love that. <laughs> Stacy, wait for it. Um, so since this text already had bullet points and numbering, I'm gonna show you something else really, really quickly. I have this guy right here. Um, I have to make like, um, so I have this information right here, which is the text some blurb that I have about sunsets. Okay. I'm going to keep it here and then I just copy pasted it. I'm going to come in here and paste it. Okay. And let me come here and press command V. Now there is again this option which says paste text only, but there is a third option, which is new. It's called auto style. Um, auto styling text essentially means that Adobe InDesign will use Adobe Sensei to auto style and know what the text is about. So if you have any numbered lists, if you have anything that you're using um, in your design, you can essentially use that here. And Adobe Sensei will essentially find out if there's numbered list, if it's a paragraph, and you can use any of these default packs to apply to it. So I didn't create these. I did not create these paragraph styles. These are all inbuilt. But the fun part about it is actually that it is, you can create your own style packs as well, which essentially we'll cover next time. But I just wanted to show you how cool it is. Um, all right, and Rob in the chat says, readability and audience is important too. Don't use a fine seven point type um, if you get a lot of seniors in your restaurant. Absolutely, yeah. Um, don't use anything less than a nine point, to be honest. And um, audience, definitely. That comes with like how branding works. What is your target audience? Think about that. But yeah, these are style packs. I love style packs. These are amazing. Like the most amount of time creating a layout is essentially using and creating paragraph style. So I love that there are style packs now and you don't really have to do a lot of those things. But um, yeah, let's let's get more information in here. I'm just getting these information, this information from here. So let's dive into actually um, the story editor. So you know how outline mode works in um, Illustrator. If you are in a text frame and you press command Y or control Y, it's going to open the story editor mode and it's just like easier um, to edit stuff here. Like I see there's a spelling mistake here, <laughs> spicy with an E, but uh, I can change this really quickly and you can also see the overset text in the story editor, right? So it's easier for me to um, edit stuff, I can just delete this guy, um, maybe to get done with it and just hit backspace in here. Okay. And then I can just hit save and I can just close this and it's auto updated in here. So I think essentially the idea is to make your workflow easier. I think that's what I always go for. So whatever I'm teaching or explaining today is essentially to make your workflow easier. You may not be designing a restaurant menu, but you may be using some of these techniques in your workflow. So if you do any of that, make sure to let me know and I can share your work here. Um, I say, um, Steve in the chat says a good layout that is easy to read and see the prices is key and a good copywriter is good to have too. Absolutely. Yeah. It should be fun. It should be like exciting. Um, I want to think about what's going to excite my audience. So having a good copywriter is essential as well. So I'm going to go back to my pages file and go to my tacos because I love tacos. Okay. Let's bring them in here. I'm going to paste it without formatting because I just want to keep it as is because I'm going to apply the formatting in here. I have these three columns, which is essentially letting me define that this is where my text goes. I have some in here and I have separated these into different text frames and we're going to make paragraph styles for it. Now, if I press W on my keyboard for an overprint view, it's going to show me the home page. Um, what I'm going to show you now is going to blow your mind. So let me jump into Illustrator really quickly and copy some information. So I think I want to add like um, address. OK, so I want to add the address for this place. It's at Logan Lane, but this is not the complete address. So I'm going to copy this and paste it out here and I paste it outside the artboard. And um, I'm going to keep it here. I'm going to hit Command C. Actually, you know what? Let me turn my keystrokes on so you guys can actually see what I'm doing. Um, so I have, all right, now you can see. So I can press Command C on my keyboard and I'm going to bring it to my InDesign file, right? And I want the address to be right over here. And I'm going to press W again just so that I can see all the frames. And um, I, I'm also going to turn uh, the hidden characters on, okay? So I have... 
um, I'm going to go to type and show hidden characters just to see what's going on in here. I'm also going to press command V and now is the best thing ever. Okay. I'm telling you, if you are copying from Illustrator to InDesign, it's going to be editable. What? It's editable, you guys. I'm going to press command V and what? This is editable. I, I'm going to press it again just because I got so excited. I forgot to put it with formatting. So I can paste it with formatting. It has the same font, the same style, color, everything. And I can double click inside the stream and it is editable. What? That is uh, blowing my mind. <laughs> Sorry, that was too loud. <laughs> um, I just got super excited. But it's editable text. Now you can copy stuff from Illustrator into InDesign and edit it. I love that. Okay, I'm just going to paste this here. Um, Street 4348, and we have Logan Lane, we have Denver, um, Colorado, and then, um, of course, these area codes are probably wrong, but it's okay because we this is a fictional project. Um, all right, so we have stuff here, and this is how it looks like, and this is the address. So what we can do now is essentially change the size of the font. Um, which is what I'm going to do. So I can click inside and then I'm going to change it to possibly like 11 points. Yeah. And I think this looks good. And now I can align it. I can center line it with this guy. So I'm going to select this, make it my selection key object. And um, I'm going to keep it here. Maybe I want to size it down just a smidge, uh, maybe perhaps like 10 points. I know that's super low, but it's fine for now. Um, and then I'm going to uh, center line it as well with this guy in the center. Okay. Clever says, Oh, I saw that need to see here. Um, yay. Yeah. D crew says so cool. And, um, miss a cha miss chat about, uh, f like menus, but I'm, I'm glad that you guys are talking about menus and all of that. Um, okay. I will add some information here later. So it doesn't look so jarry. Um, possibly. Okay, and I can just essentially align it. Essentially, I think it should be it should be something like this. All right, I'm gonna press W just to see how it looks. All right, maybe I'll add add some information here, but I'm gonna hit undo um, just because I wanna I wanna save this. By the way, save your file, save your file. If you're looking and working, save your file. All right, so this is how it looks. Let's start with adding. I have added some information here. I probably add some information here as well. But I think I want to add some um, assets to this, guys. So I'm going to go to my Illustrator and I'm going to see what we have here. Um, there is some really cool. This is like a really cool pattern that I have. So I'm going to copy this and I'm going to paste it on the side. And I'm going to group this. Uh, maybe I'm enlarging it a little bit just so it's easier. And um, then I'm going to copy this again and bring it into InDesign and paste it here. See how that looks. Um, I think it, it looks cool. Maybe we can use it like a border somewhere. I don't know, maybe something like this. Um, and then make like a repeat pattern in Illustrator and bring it inside. I'm not too sure, but I'm just going to leave it here for right now. Okay. And this, this is looking cool. I think this is coming together nicely. Or maybe you can use it as like a paragraph. Um, rule or something all right let's go into here and create a paragraph rule okay so i'm inside a text frame i'm gonna press option command and j and that will show up the paragraph rules i can create something like a a rule below and if i turn it on that's how it's gonna look if that's what it means essentially it has an underline um right here like a rule that you can change you can change the type of it it can be thick it can be thick to thin um, and then I can show you how it looks with like diamonds. It's too tiny. Let me change the width of it so you can see clearly. That's how it looks. So um, this is the first one. There are multiple types in here that you can change. There are triple lines, dash lines. We have straight hashes. So all of these can be used to denote categories. So I'm going to change the width to be like four, I guess. That's fine. And um, then I want to change like, um, I guess I'm just going to use diamond because it kind of ties in with our brand language and I can change the text color in here as well. There's so many colors. I think I'm going to choose this one just because it's one of the brand colors and I've used it before. That is why it's available in my swatches panel. Um, I am going to change the width option here to text which is going to change it instantly till the text is wherever the text is and then i have the gap color i don't think i have anything here and i can also change the offset so offset essentially means the space between our text and the 
rule so i'm gonna i can decrease it increase it anything you want so i'm gonna increase it to like 0 0.0625 inches and then you can indent it as well so if you want to decrease the number of things like number of types in the rule you can change that and similarly on the left and right so it's pretty cool you can preview it here and then i can simply go it's uh, non-destructive so you can simply if you don't like it you can simply go in here and change it again so i'm gonna keep the white diamonds um think i think this is fine okay and then um i'm gonna hit okay just to just to make sure that everything's fine and now i can zoom in and see what it is um okay hold on well wow, that's really zoomed in and maybe i want to change the color of this guy as well so i go to properties i'm gonna go to fill and i think this is it i'm not too sure if this is the color oh maybe not so i can go to my cc libraries and change the color in here so i'm gonna bring the cc libraries right over here and I'm going to select this and I'm going to select the color and there you go. That's the color that we want because that's a brand color and I'm going to leave this be. I want to change the font of this. So let me actually change it to Cooper standard. I think that's what I used. I don't have it in here. Um, I don't have the paragraph style, but I think this was um, Cooper standard. Let me see. Let me see really quickly. Hold on. I think it was Cooper. It looks like it. Yeah, Cooper standard. All right. Yeah, of course. Um, so I am going to change it to that um, just so that it looks. Ooh, that looks pretty cool. Okay, I'm going to press W just to see how that looks. All right. All right. I really, really like this. I also think that I want to keep these on the side for now. And I can essentially add like a background color. So I can add like um, a rectangular shape here. This is the parent page that I have. And um, I'm just going to keep it here so that it applies to everything that has the a parent applied to it so i'm going to select this color maybe turn down the opacity we're going to think about that in just a second change the color of that later and um just want to see how it's going to look in print um maybe maybe something like that um i will change it to a solid color when i'm printing it okay uh voodoo val val says also want to point out how gorgeous these colors are love them hey thank you i appreciate it okay um yeah, that is amazing. Thanks, Val. Well. Um, I, uh, I was contemplating my color choices here. <laughs> I feel like all my passion projects are just so vibrant. I'm like, everything is purple. Uh, let's do it. No, okay. So now we have this, okay? I don't really necessarily like the paragraph rule, but I just wanted to show you how it's done. So I'm going to go back inside and I am going to turn the rule off and click OK again. So this is how it looks. I'm going to press W just to show you how that looks. And I can change the color of this as well. So I can change it to this guy. I think that's looking cool. I also want to change the size before I actually make um, a paragraph style. So I am going to go ahead and make it like 14 points. And uh, voila, we have something. Okay. And now I want every single heading or a category of items on the menu to be the same style and how do i do that i have this selected i'm inside that group okay i'm gonna go to my paragraph styles in here and i'm gonna create a new style um hold on yes i'm gonna create a new style in here it's the same thing but that's just like more confusing for me um anyway so i'm gonna shut that down but that you can create auto styling sets in there as well so i'm gonna click new paragraph style and call it a category Okay, and now I can go inside the category style. Whoa, that's a list of styles. <laughs> Those are all the auto styles that we have by default. Okay, let me close that. Um, so this is what we just created and I'm gonna hear this and not hear this, sorry, I was reading chat while talking. Um, Val says, you won't hear complaints from me on making everything purple. Exactly, you're the best person because you make everything purple. Um, <laughs> all right. Perfect. So I'm going to go in here. I can change the hyphenation for this as well. I don't think there will be an issue here, but I just always as a force of habit, turn it off. I can change the sizing in here as well. So if I wanted 15 points, let's say I can click on preview and change the size. I can also change the character color, but we don't really want that because we set everything up from the get go. I'm going to click OK. And now we have a paragraph style for the headings. I'm going to hit escape just because I want that. And now if I go on to my uh, another category that we have, go to my paragraph style right here and click on this. 
bam that's where you have the category already and i did not even have to do anything just 10 minutes of work and that's it so i think this is pretty neat it's already looking fun i do want to change this as well um i think i'll just keep this as one text one big text box because i can change the indentation later and then we have this guy okay so i think these are looking pretty cool it's already coming together and looks pretty cool i want to change like um the i want to add some tabs to this right we just talked about how the pricing of every item should be visible and it should be aligned look looks pretty and everything so let's make it pretty cuz why not um what i'm going to do is essentially add tab stops and uh before we do that i'm actually going to create another paragraph style for this so i'm going to zoom in quite a bit here and i'm going to select everything and i press command a or control a if you're working on a windows device and i think we chose obviously is a font which i really really like i got it off of uh adobe stock it's called obviously and it was medium that's what we used yeah it looks so fun i think it goes well with like cooper standard because it's like curvy and we have this which goes in and ties everything with our brand language i'm going to click here and show you how um i how you can procure fonts if you if you've never seen how to procure fonts um so you can just go to all fonts i know there were some folks in chat who did not know that you can actually get fonts in all your creative cloud applications so um this is fonts.adobe.com where you can find any fonts you want lust script is definitely one of my favorites they have recommendations as well um i think they're probably based on how many people activate them um on the home page that's just a guess i don't know and um we have all of these um some grotesque files cocktails highway and uh, input mono gimlet you can activate any of this so um <laughs> i'm trying to find a font that i don't have activated so i can show you how to activate it but maybe we have this okay i'm going to click on that and um i can activate this just by clicking on this button so it says activate 18 fonts and it's going to activate everything in your creative cloud now you can use this font anywhere in any creative cloud application which is pretty cool robert in the chat says adobe needs to add a new b tutorial how to change style in our starter files starter files what do you mean starter files i don't know what you mean uh, robert can you elaborate do you mean start auto style the style packs but let me know um so now this is former djr display and i just activated it just to show you how that works i'm going to select everything and i can show you that if i go in here um and say former djr display it activated the 18 fonts that we had in that font family and there you go it is in my indesign file and i don't need to worry about any of that so um let's go ahead and delete it just because i want to get this get this done right um let's actually make it smaller so i'm going to go in here and make it like 10 points um i may wanted to make everything 10 points so let's actually type in 10 10 okay and i also want to change the color in here so maybe i'll just select this and select this color i think that's looking pretty cool or perhaps we can have this color and the color of this guy would essentially be the purple just because i want readability so um I want something here which is like a tab stop because I want all of these prices to be at the same line like right aligned in here. So I'm going to zoom in just a little bit keeping an eye on time. We're 28 minutes in. So if you're just joining us, um we're creating a menu design um for a plant-based restaurant and I'm just adding tab stops here. So what I'm going to do now is press uh, shift command T which is right over here. or you can essentially go to uh hold on is it type it, it's type it's type and uh tabbing where are you tabbing 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 oh tabs right here <laughs> just like forgot <laughs> forgot where the option does that ever happen to you guys like you just forget where where you where you find those options and you just remember shortcuts i don't know it happens to me all the time but we have that here and um we have this space here but i'm just going to press tab in here okay now what i can do here now is essentially i want to keep it um left justified and then i can add a tab okay so i'm going to add a tab in here uh, maybe like something like this oh that's weird there is so weird yeah maybe something like this there is so weird it's not doing anything but i can press like a leader um i can press tab just to see how that works and essentially 
Okay, it is working. I just wasn't using the right button. And undo a bunch of times. Hello, and press tab. Okay, and now I want it to be left justified from where our text is, and I want to add some spaces. Okay, so we have this guy, and um, what is happening? I can't tell what's happening. Okay, there you go. Yeah, so I want this to be where it's basically like adding color stops in a gradient. And this is how you would add tab stops. So I'm just adding like tabbing to this information. And I have this here. This is the tab stop right over here, which is left justified. I can move it around. I can also change this, how this leader looks. So this can be a dash. It can be a dot. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Entered it in the wrong uh, thing. Okay. It can be a dot. It can be a dot and a space. If you want it to be spaced out, it can be that. And I think I'm happy with that. So I'm just going to save that. And we have some information in here. Um, now, this looks like it's not perfect because not all of them are the same styles, right? And what I can do is create like a new paragraph style just with this tab stop. So I can click in here. Um, and I don't need to select everything, but I just like force of habit. And then I can just say food, um, sorry, food name or item name, whatever you want to call it. And then I have this in here and I can just go and select, I'm pressing W. I'm going to go and select everything in here. Um, I'm actually going to use tab to create tab stops. And essentially we need tabbing in our characters, which is, I think we have that in here. Yeah, we do. Okay, I'm just going to select all the names of the items and then I'm going to select the style we just created and voila, we have everything here in the click of a button because we really did not feel the burn juice. I forgot about that. <laughs> so we have all of this information in here and it's all aligned and beautiful looking because we did it, you guys. We did it. Um, can you believe that we did all of this? But um, we have this in here. We got this in here and we have some food names. Hello, hello. We have our menu coming together. I love that. Okay. So we have um, Stacy says, I'm just looking at chat now. And Stacy says, the mini tutorials in the home screen. I don't know what you mean. Wait, talking to Robert? I'm not sure. Um, styles like paragraph and character styles, headline, body text, outlines. Um, I forget where the brush tool was in Fresco once. Don't worry. Thank you, Val. Validation. Um, <laughs> Clever says, pro tip, learn tabs and use them. Yes, yes, yes. They're helpful. Um, Stacy says, another cool tip. Annika got the good stuff. Leader options. Who knew? Oh, my God. Yeah. Gorgeous. Okay, cool. Robert says, I was thinking of making a cookbook with my mother old. Um recipes oh that's cool i have a cookbook uh, I, I created a cookbook layout as well so you can follow that let's and design show that's one of the episodes that we had so you can go back ahead to watch i have a playlist in my on my youtube channel you can go there um, it's called adobe live and it has all the let's and design shows so you can go in there and check it out i can actually bring it up really quickly oh that's not what i wanted <laughs> that's not what i wanted so if you go to my youtube um right over here I can show you on my channel. Um, there's this playlist that I have called Adobe Live. And this has all of my, um, there's this cookbook layout that I created. And you can actually follow that and create a cookbook layout, which will be cool. I would love to see what you create, Robert. So if you create something, let me know and tag me wherever on social media. Twitter is probably the best way. Um, all right. So we have something here and which is super cool. I love that. Love how this is looking. We are 33 minutes in and we're already like halfway through. So I'm really excited. I also want to create like, a, oh, wait, we already created a paragraph style for that. I want to see what style this is. Perhaps um, I'm going to go do something really quickly. <laughs> give me a second. OK, give me a second. OK, yeah. Now, now, now we're good. OK, I'm going to come back. But we have in here, um, thank you, Val, for putting that link in chat. Yeah, now there is a link in the live chat that you can follow and see um, any tutorials that you would like, whatever's been done on um, Adobe Live. So I think this is the font that I'm going to choose for this. Um, it's very approachable. And I think that that's what we want with our brand. We want it to be accessible and approachable. And now you can see that there's a hyphenation going on in here. So I'm going to go in here and possibly change that. And how I can do that is essentially create a new paragraph style. I'm going to change the color. I think this should be purple. 
oh wait i can't change it here and here because that's already a style so if i change it at one place it's not gonna change it at all the places so i'm gonna click the pencil icon go to my character color and change it to this color and that's going to change it instantly everywhere else now this is going to introduce some contrast because i want it to be like i want the eye to move like that way if i had reds it was too much and what i did was go to food name um go to character color and then selected the green and now it kind of looks fun i also want to go in here and create a new style so what i want to do is press um food call it food description description and then i'm gonna go in here to the style and change the color to the red that we had which is essentially gonna help you move the eye so there you go voila i also want to change the hyphenation so if you don't want the hyphens to come in you can go in here to the hyphenation tab and uncheck this button um this is what happens if i uncheck it the cucumber drops to the next line um i'm gonna click okay and that's what we have and i hit w just to see how it looks it's looking cool i think it's coming together really nicely i want to select all of these now just so that i can apply the paragraph style i had so let me select all of this right in here um over here select food description and voila we have something brilliant coming to life i don't like the juices and smoothies but we can change the colors anytime we want which is why we use paragraph styles in here but um i hope you are following um all 43 of you watching thank you for being here um if you are lurking don't forget to save your work um well says my pleasure yeah when when do well, i can never say that properly i'm sorry says the menu is coming to life pretty well thank you yeah that was the idea i think just like using the basics always helps it kind of works out really really well sometimes and i think i love that <laughs> i think i love that yes okay i'm gonna delete this one mm, i think don't need these i need these as well and this one kind of blends in so i am gonna press w and oh this is looking fun i really love this i really love this brand language um i can possibly use like a shape in here as well like a rhombus 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 yeah <laughs> that that's what you say it and um i can apply the same same styles in here as well and uh, these are not styled properly so maybe i will um leave the leave these be for now but i, I do want to jump into adobe stock and show you how you can use a template now this was something that was very like maybe you have a specification from a client your client give you strict requirements about how it's going to work what colors you want you can't use a template there right it's a very specific commissioned work kind of a thing but if you you wanted something to create wanted to create something with like stock assets and just for like your profile and portfolio you can probably think about like licensing stuff or if you just want to practice it you can go to stock.adobe.com and think about how you can license um from there right so i'm going to jump into stock.adobe.com really quickly where you can this is another way that you can create a menu in the description it does say that i'm going to teach you how you can make the menu in two different ways so this is the second way i'm just going to write restaurant menu right here and um this was the one that's actually in the thumbnail which i licensed but i actually want to template so i'm going to click you can filter it from the asset type you want and you can make it a template and then you can also click on the app that you want so instead of like it's right above me you can click on indesign and that's where you will find the indesign templates it's super cool they have a lot of fun stuff in here you can change the paragraph style still and it can be like really really functional i i'm just i'm just thinking what all i wanted to show you am i showing you everything i think i'm showing you everything let me think about it Oh yeah and also with like CC libraries you can add assets to this as well so maybe i wanted to add like this guy in here as well maybe like house queen um maybe i wanted to add that little fun asset in here i can do that as well because this is creative cal libraries and the workflow is like super easy if you use them so okay i'm just making sure i'm covering everything i have a list here i have a list here of uh, of <laughs> adding everything all right yeah all right i think i think we're i think we're good so now i'm gonna go back to stock and show you what assets we have so we have about 68 results for our categories and all the filters we have 
and um, we have these. There are minimalist menus. I'm gonna license that again. We have some menus in here as well. I'm gonna license it. And whenever you're licensing stuff, I think it's really, really important to think about what kind of license it is. So I just clicked on this license type, which says enhanced, and that opened the license information. Now this can help me compare what kind of licenses that are on Adobe stock exist. There's a standard license, enhanced, and an extended license. Now if I'm using ex extended license, which is enhanced license, which is what this file was, um, it is essential to think about where, what your usage is of the template and how you, you, how many times you can share it. So this one says it's unlimited web views. The use of asset can be done in email marketing, mobile advertising, social media, or a broadcast program. You can modify the asset. You can use, some of them are editorial use only. So there are some restrictions on that. You can create these many copies or views of the assets. And um, if it's an enhanced or an extended license, you can make it more than 500,000. These assets may be used in merchandise templates or other products for resale. Since this is a personal, personal project, I don't think I need an extended license because I'm not gonna print it. But in case you're printing it, you should think about getting an extended license instead of an enhanced, enhanced license. Um, uh, yeah, what are words, but you can think about editorial use right over here. You can think about what these licenses are. I think licensing is not often talked about, but it's really, really important to avoid copyright conflicts. And that's something as creators, we all should think about. Okay. Um, that's my licensing, uh, rant, but, <laughs> uh, I, I want to show you more now. Okay. So there are more uh, designs in here as well. And the beauty about using stock assets is essentially the fact that you can ideally make this template as like um, a Photoshop template and that's gonna give you uh, mockups. So instead of essentially, actually, you know what? Let's actually look for a trifold brochure so we can we can create a mockup at the end of this as well, because why not? Um, I think, I think I really like this, the trifold brochure. And this is all free, by the way. So you can download it um, and use it for your projects. I'm gonna re-download that one. And then I'm gonna re-find the restaurant menu. Restaurant, that's how you mention, that's how you type it. Okay, I'm gonna look at chat, a quick peek to chat, just to make sure I'm not missing any questions. Um, okay doesn't look like i'm missing any questions all right remember if you have any questions we have about 15 minutes in the stream so make sure to let me know if any questions arise all right um i'm just making sure everything is working fine i'm gonna put in design in here and then i'm gonna probably activate another one before we get into it something that's a little bit different maybe i want like a marble menu restaurant Ooh, fancy Okay, let's let's go into my downloads really quickly. Um, you don't want to see that, but I do want to open all these files. I'm going to double click it and it's going to open into InDesign. And this is what the marbled one looks like. I can press W just to show you how it looks. We have food menu, restaurant. So if it's something that you like just creating for fun and you want to practice, there are tons and tons of assets available on Adobe stock that you can modify. So I can essentially just like go here and add the logo. So um, obviously this is not the right restaurant for this kind of brand. Like I would not have marble tops in my restaurant. I would probably have like outdoors. It would be like an outdoor patio situation for me at Puro. But um, if it's like a fancy fine dining place, it's probably having marble tops and I don't know, Italian marble tops. <laughs> But um, so let's take a look at another one just because I want to see how the other menus look. So you can mix and match all of this in here and change all of this information. So this is essentially the paragraph style. It's called Teeth through the section, section. Um, that's basically French title of the section. There are um, food options in here. There are multiple paragraph styles that you can change text of the logo. This is probably made by someone um, who is French. That is why the paragraph styles are in French. But I can always go ahead in here and change it and call it burritos. That's what we want, right? We want burritos, tacos and burritos. Uh, I'm gonna change this right over here and I can center line stuff as well. Um, we do, it, it is center line, kind of doesn't look like it, but that's how it looks. It looks pretty cool. I like the ribbon texture and maybe we can replace it by um, this that we have in here. So I can just like grab this in here and it was this file. So I can 
essentially paste it in here to make it my own so even though you are if it's like an enhanced license i think this was the enhanced license you can modify it so i bring it in here um right over here and i can add like my brand elements in here without actually changing changing how it looks and we have this in here i'm gonna group everything and i'm gonna delete this guy and then i can bring it in so essentially, this is how I'm personalizing everything. I don't need to use every single thing and I can add in my my assets in here. So I'm going to press W again just to show you how that looks. And of course, this color again can be changed and I can change all of that. Um, clever says burrito is just advanced origami taco. <laughs> that is funny. Um, yeah, <laughs> that is funny. <laughs> I'm always going to remember that now. Um, <laughs> shift option command V. It's going to paste in place. Um, yeah, so that's how it looks. It looks pretty, pretty cool. I think it is coming together really nicely. I can go in here as well and press shift command T to see how, how they've, they've used um, a leader here or le leader, leader, leader. That's how you say it. And then press enter and see how that looks. Um, oh, they have not used that. So I want to see what they have used. I find it really fascinating to see what other people have created in their files. I feel like it's like super fun to see what what's going on in here. Um, they do have something in here. There are tabs. Um, there are paragraph rules in here as well. Wait, are there rules? No, there are no rules. Paragraph borders. So you can think about all of these things and like that's how how much like it's so easy to use like a stock asset and you can like change it as well it's editable so you don't really need to think like you don't need to um care like there is no care in the world where you can essentially like you can just do whatever you want because it's so easy i can't believe it how many times i said that but essentially you can personalize it like this the same way i'm doing it right now and then i can possibly do something like this Ooh, fancy i really do love love how this is coming along we're on to something folks we're on to something okay let me let me kind of fix this a second hold on yeah i'm gonna delete this guy and then I'm gonna bring it in like this. Okay, we're com it's coming together. It's coming together. <gasps> it's coming together. Sorry. <laughs> and then obviously we're gonna we're gonna fix this. So I'm gonna delete this guy, and I can delete this guy, and I can delete this guy. Hello, 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 hello. This is looking cool. I love that. I love that we have this information here. Uh, I know Fergie is in the chat. Hey, Fergie, what's up? How are you doing? Long time no see. I hope you had fun at Max. We have, um, guys, I met Fergie at Max. <laughs> Val, I just read it in Val voice. Um, but we have all this in here. So I'm going to go ahead and edit some of this information in here. Um, I'm going to press Command C. And then I'm going to go in here and press Shift Command Option V. Shift Option Command V. Okay, there you go. And then I will try to remove this information as well. So I'm essentially just like changing how it looks, right? Because this is editable, edible, okay, edible and editable. Um, I'm going to bring it in here and then I can add these assets in here. But again, if you have any questions, let me know and I will be happy to answer them. There is, um, wait, what is next week? I'm trying to think what we have next week. Ooh, we're designing brochures next week, which is exciting. I don't know if you all were here for it, but I'm going to be designing brochures next week, which is exciting. I love making something like this. It's super cool. Um, so essentially what I'm doing is using assets that can tie in my brand language and all the design together, um, which is essentially keeping it all co cohesive and I don't need to think about how it's going to look. So this one is quite complicated. It's a bigger menu. And these are different sizes, which is why it's the same. There's a one page menu in here as well. So if I scroll down, there's a one page menu. And we have uh, something like this as well. We have something like a longer menu as well. You can go in here and select like this is a tabloid size. We have in here, we have this as the A3 size. The second one is a letter size and the first page is um, an A4. So we have A4 front and back, the trifold brochure. Then we have one and two, which is a letter size. And then we have tabloid and we also have an A3 size. So I feel like this is coming together really, really nicely. Um, with only five minutes to go, I'm actually going to open um, Photoshop really quickly. I'm going to quit illustrator and open photoshop really quickly so i can essentially sh show you how i have um 
I can use it on a mock-up because I just want to show you how it's going to look. Okay, let's open Photoshop. I don't think I've opened Photoshop after updating it. Have I? I, I have. I have. I have. I just opened it this morning. I forgot about <laughs> forgot about that. Okay, so this is another template that I got from Adobe Stock and it is looking pretty damn cool. So I have this in here. This is the placeholder. Page 1, page 2, page 3. Alrighty. Okay, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Okay. So I am going to grab, um, I'm going to go back to my video screen really quickly, but I am going to go in here, go to my InDesign file and show you how menu can look like. I'm going to cooking show it. <laughs> so this is the menu that I made. Um, I just cooking showed everything because we love doing that here. I mean, I do because it's always nice to see um, a work in progress that this is what I thought and this is where I started from and this is how it ended. So I feel like it's super cool and important to see what the end product looks like because that's how you sell your products, right? So I'm going to copy all of this and then I'm going to bring it into Photoshop and I'm going to press command V. Now this is super small but I'm going to size it up really quickly just so that I can show you guys what's going on. Okay, like this. It may not align really well but we'll we'll see what we can do about that. We shall see my friends. We shall see. I'm going to press save. Okay. Okay. I love that. Um, I love that. Hello. What? This is crazy. Um, this is also a color that we want. So I'm going to open the CC libraries really quickly. They are open. Oh, there we are. Sorry, didn't see that. Um, we have the mod squad library right over here. Um, Rio Mike is in the chat. Hey, what's up? Love it when the menu has photos of the food. Love it. Um, Val says, yes. I don't know what we're talking about, but I'm happy to. <laughs> um, okay, I'm going to go to Puro really quickly and add like a color. So I'm going to add solid color. Click OK. And then I can add like a color we have in our library right over here. And then I can possibly change the opacity to like, I don't know, 1%? One, 1 no, that's not what you wanted. And maybe I want to add like a white background as well because we're printing that, printing it on that. I don't have time to change the color. I'm going to hit save. And we have something going on in here, which is pretty cool. Um, and then I'm going to go to page two really quickly. How much time do we have? Okay, 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 okay. We have time. We have time. <laughs> Alrighty, um, I'm going to copy this really quickly. Um, hold on. All right, we're going to make it, you guys. We're going to make it. And then we have this in here. Yeah. All right, all right, all right. We're probably going to make it, okay? It may not look like perfect, but nothing's perfect. And we have this information and we have the first page left, okay? So I'm going to bring it in here. I'm going to do it. Um, uh, pray for me. We have just a few minutes left, so pray for me. And I hit say, all right, I think, we, I think we're going to make it, you guys. I think we're going to make it. All right, let, let, me, let me resize it. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Um... <laughs> Um, I'll change the background color as well just to make it ooh, fun. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. But this is what we created. It's looking so cool. I love that. All right. So this is what we created today. We created a menu design, which looks like this. It lo it's looking super cool. I love that we ended up creating this and um thank you so much for joining me um i really enjoyed my time here today because it was super exciting sharing some new features of indesign i also will be back next week again same time tuesdays at 4 p.m eastern time i hope you had lots of fun today learning paragraph rules tab stops creating paragraph styles and just using InDesign efficiently. I love that I can also showcase Creative Cloud Library. So if you're watching this on replay and just skipped it to the end, this is your sign to go ahead and watch the whole video because it has some amazing stuff. Thank you so much for being here again live with me. And um, I will be back Tuesday. Wait, I already said that. But I will be back Tuesday, 4 p.m. Eastern time. We're going to work on a brochure design for a virtual reality museum. So if you've been here watching me create something for a virtual reality museum, museum we're going to continue working on that project and it's like a series of things we're doing i can take your input as well so um yeah we will be at the same adobe live channel same time same with me let's in design this is annika signing out and i hope you have a great day stick around for the photoshop no
premier creative challenges with Evan Abrams up next. And I hope you all have a great rest of your week. Thanks for being with me and I'll see you next time. Bye.